so one last thing we look today uh, again we started with a two stage ot and we did miller compensation now in addition to miller compensation what other thing you can do for stabilizing feed forward so let's look at a two stage fully differential feed forward op amp and we'll finish today so once again i'll draw the two stage ot so this is the first stage This is the first stage fully differential OTA and the second stage I will draw like this. I just drawn a two stage OTA, nothing else. So now we want to uh, do a feed forward compensation. So again, to refresh your memory, let me just draw at a block level. So let us say I have uh, minus GM1. And I have, I will draw single ended pictures. This is what we have now a two stage OTA with some R and C at each thing. So now we want to compensate. So how do we do for feed forward? We add a faster path. So how do we add a faster path? From the input to the output, you add another GM. What should be the sign of the GM plus or minus? I mean, the way I have drawn it here. Remember that both should have the same sign because you want an LHP zero. So this should be plus GM three. Again, I'm drawing this because you might be, uh, I mean, this this is something that you will be designing in a second design project. Okay, so now you don't need to pay attention. So, yeah, so now let's, uh, this is done, two stages there. You just need to add the feed forward path. So, let's do that. So, uh, in the single ended picture, I need to have a GM from the input to the output. So, we have fully differential case finally. So, I need to have a differential GM. And the simplest differential GM is your differential pair. So let's do that. Actually, before that, let me label this. Let us say this is plus, this is VA minus. Let us say this is VO M1, VO P1. Okay. Now I want to add the third or the feed forward GM. Oops. So this is the third GM, fine, it's a differential pair, I am just adding to the output. The only thing that I have to figure out is whether this should be VI plus or VI minus, right? So how do you uh, decide that? How do you decide that? What sets that? Yeah, let's see. So let us say you change the input here, let us say the input here increases, what happens to the uh, VO M1? That reduces. So if this voltage reduces, what happens to VOP? That's how I also labeled, this is plus and plus, okay. So now which means that, so uh, the this path is providing a positive uh, thing. So if I increase here, this will increase. So I should apply an appro appropriate input here so that we have the same change there, right? So here, if I apply VIP, if VIP is increasing, what will happen to this voltage? Decrease. So this should not be VIP, VIM. Because differentially, if VIP increases, VIM reduces. So the left side here has to be VIM. That's all. Is that okay? 
Again, this is to make sure that the zero is added in the left half of S plane. That's the only consideration. Okay. And of course, here one question uh, you should be asking is, uh, why don't I just do this? Right. Because even in your two-stage Miller OTA, I had only common mode rejection for the first stage. The second stage I just did it. So why don't I do this? So if I don't do this, what do you think will happen? So let's see, I mean basically at least the act of adding this current source is providing an inherent common mode rejection, right? So let's see what's happening, right? So if let us say I have a common mode change, both input increase. This is the first stage, it, it's biased with the tail current source. Let us say this is an ideal current source for the time being. So what do you think will happen to the outputs? Outputs will not change. It's biased with the constant current source. So the output change will be zero. So which means if here there is zero change. Okay. So normally in a two stage OT it is fine. Okay. Because the first stage is giving you a good common mode rejection that is suppressing any uh, common mode changes. We are okay. But now if I do this feed forward also, the input is applied to this guy also. Now if the input here increases, what will happen to the voltage here? It will decrease. So now you have lost your common mode rejection because you didn't have this guy. Okay. So uh, that's why you need to have this guy here. So basically you need to make sure that the at least the first block or the block that processes your input that should have a common mode rejection. Okay. So this input is directly processed by your feed forward GM. So you should make sure that also has a good CMR. Right. So this is the thing I'll uh, final circuit but I'll redraw it in a slightly common way in a much neater way to speak. So what I'll do is this I'll take first stage as it is. Just for cosmetic reasons, nothing else. The first stage. I'll draw the second stage like this. I'll draw the second stage separately. Let us say I apply oops, Evo M1 here and tail current source here. Yes. Similarly, the other uh, Vivo P1 is applied here. Yes. So this is my EOP. Same thing. I've just uh, draw it, drawn it separately. So this is a normal two-stage OTA. So now I am going to add a feed-forward stage. So this was VIM. This was VIP. Let us see how some. So now let us say uh, this is biased to be at the current I2, and let us say you want this to be biased at the current I3, right? So what can you say about the bias current here? I2 minus I3. That is the current flowing here. So what do you think will be a, a trivial choice for choosing I2 and I3? I mean, I have I2, I3, there are three possibilities, one greater than the other, or what would be a simplest choice? Both equal. both equal. I mean, there is no harm in choosing one greater than the other, but let us say you choose both to be equal, then what can you say about the current here? So which means you need this. So that basically simplifies it, you don't need this. So that reduces two more transistors. That's all. Right? So uh, I'll basically now I'll simplify the circuit like this. The same thing. This is not there, right? And I will let's see if I can slightly. So you have this, or I'll erase and draw. It's okay. So what I am doing now is I am going to directly connect it here, that's all. 
I don't need two current sources now. I'll have the tail current source of this guy biasing it at two times I2, where I2 is the current flowing in both these guys. Okay. Is this clear? There is no harm in the other thing also, but this is a simpler circuit. And this is also efficient because you are reusing the same current for both your second stage as well as your uh, feed forward stage. So typically this is called current reuse uh, stuff. Wherein the idea is the following, you don't have a separate transistor whose job is to just bias. right? So here you had two transistors, their mere existence is to provide the bias current, but not providing any GM or any amplification. Here you have, uh, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have the case. Okay. Cool, so this is your two stage feed forward uh, OTA. Again, you need to have common mode feedback. So let me actually do that. This is one. So you need to have separate common mode feedbacks for this guy. So whatever considerations we had in your two stage, you know, Miller OTA, for the common mode feedback, the same thing will hold here, right? Because here, once again, uh, I, I don't want to put a resistive common mode detector because that will load the first stage. So to use any of the other things and the reference voltage here that you set the output common mode for the first stage to be, that cannot be arbitrary because that is directly setting the current in the second stage that has to be chosen appropriately. Same thing as in the old one. And again, for the second stage also, you need to have a CMFB. So here, the choice is to have a resistive common mode detector. So I'll just draw that. So I'll do this. Oops. So I'll compare it to your common mode reference to once again, typical values to choose it to be around VDD by two. And then you can go and control the gate voltage. So I'll flip it and draw so that it's neat. So this is two times I2. Okay. So again, if you look at the second state CMFB, this will look like another two stage OTA. Right, because again, let's I'll draw it so that there is no confusion. If you draw the common mode half circuit for the second stage alone, so again, uh, common mode half circuit, so things will get put in parallel. So I'll draw only uh, one half. So this half is gone. <coughs> this is what you have. So now you see that this is your first stage that feeds the output to the second stage, which is this NMOS transistor. And the output is tapped from here, right? So essentially if I break the loop at the input here, I don't want to break it so much, yeah. Now you see that this is the first stage, second stage, output of the second stage is taken from here because that's what is finally fed back. So if you were to do Miller compensation, where would you put the capacitor? between the input and the output of the second stage. Input of the second stage, output of the second stage. Okay, so that's where you have to go and put. So you have to go and put a Miller cap here. Is that okay? Because the output is taken from here, right? Not from here. That's a difference. So again, uh, this is how it should look like in the common mode picture, wherein we have an effective capacitance of CCM put in, uh, put across this current source. So in the actual circuit, from each of these outputs, I'll have half the capacitor connected here. Right? So again, uh, for cosmetic purposes, this one transistor carrying two times the current, I'll split it as two transistors, put in parallel. Okay, so I'll just show it like this. This is the same thing. That single transistor I split as two half of it. 
so that now I can draw it nicely like this. I'll put a capacitor uh, from this node to here, the capacitor from this node to here. Okay, and both values is CCM by two. That's all. So again, uh, when you design for this in the differential mode half circuit, this capacitor's effect should be taken into account, right? Because if you draw the differential mode half circuit, this will be a small signal ground. So this capacitor, that will actually come and load, right? So uh, that I'll leave it as an exercise. It's pretty trivial. So this guy will, this capacitor will load your differential mode half circuit. So in your pole calculations, that has to be taken. So one minor variation I'll just show and leave. So sometimes what is also done is the following. If you see here, uh, this is the first stage, GM1. This is GM2. This is your feed forward GM3. Now the first stage here has an inherent common mode rejection. Second, I mean the feed forward stage also has a common mode rejection. But what about second stage? Does it have any rejection inherently? No, right? So if you want to, uh, sometimes to have a even better common mode rejection, you can actually go and put a tail source for the this guy also. Second stage also like this. Right? So if you want to have an even better common mode rejection, you can do it. So once you do that, now for common mode feedback, right now I have fixed this current and tuning this current. You will get an additional degree. If you want, you can fix this current to be some value and tune this guy. So, okay. so this is your uh, feed forward OTA. I'll just write it here and leave. And in general, right, if you have uh, multiple blocks like this in your system, so typically it is obviously an ideal choice to have a good common mode rejection for each block individually. But if that is not possible, what might be practical choice is the following. You make sure that the first stage or the stage that processes the input has a good common mode rejection. So that is, if there is any common mode jump, this will not respond. So the rest of the circuits can be pseudo differential also. Right? Just need to make sure that you have a good common mode rejection at the beginning of your signal chain, because from the inputs is where you expect any common mode changes. So if the changes from the input common mode is suppressed by your first stage, all the other stages, even if they don't have a good common mode rejection by ha having the tail current, it is okay. okay. And one last thing, so again, now you have choice between omega UCM, omega UDM, right? So typically, uh, let us say you are given specification only on the differential mode thing because that's what you are finally interested in. Differentially, if you have, uh, apply some input, my closed loop bandwidth must be so much and so. That will set your differential mode omega u and phase margin. Now for common mode, again, uh, you can either choose it to be greater or lesser. So one uh, line of thought is, remember that uh, my actual goal is to make a differential mode amplifier. So if I don't want to spend lot of power in my common mode feedback loops. So from that line of thought, it makes sense that I choose this guy to be smaller, not so high. But sometimes you might find that in your application, the expected in, in the final targeted applications there can be a lot of common mode disturbances. In that case, you don't want your system to respond. It has to suppress it quickly. So in there, you might find that you will have to choose to be greater. Again, there is no uh, general thing for this. It all application specific. If you are only interested in reducing the power, you can make it to be smaller. I'll stop here. Uh, that ends fully.